what have been, and I want to be respectful of your time here, um, so maybe one last question. What have been some of the most surprising things that you've seen in your career as a VC? And are there any big disappointments? I guess the things that have surprised me is I know the world is not fair, but I very much want to be. And sometimes I notice odd behavior that I'm very surprised is allowed to exist, that it, at least people can exist in the ecosystem at all. I will say it tends to be, so I was in New York for 13 years. Love mm -hmm. New York. Very different way of thinking about doing business stuff. Mm. When I've been surprised by behavior from investors, the predominant instances have been New York, LA, other, mm. versus classic Silicon Valley. Now, I'm not saying I've never seen bad behavior in Silicon Valley. However, respected brand name tier one firms, I'm not sure. I mean, it's extraordinarily rare. Uh, it, like, my belief is simple. It's not about the firm. It's about the partner. You always want to be with the right partner for you. You want to mm -hmm. be a firm that's credible and everything else. But the right partner at a firm that's solid is better than the wrong partner at a firm that's solid plus plus. Mm -hmm. right? And so when I have seen bad behavior, um, it has almost without exception, if it's, if it's in Silicon Valley, it's with almost without exception been partner specific. In other areas, I have noticed it being in some cases firm specific. Hmm. Uh, other than that, you know, there's certainly rounds where I, you know, the classic scratch your head. You just don't know how or why that got done at that price. Just, well, more power to you, dude. I hope it works out. Uh, <laughs> long ago, Halsey Miner, who started CNET, one of the bubble hmm. one exits, uh, told us a story. Uh, it was, you know, he raised a huge round, 60 million, 100 million, some big round, which seemed huge to me at the time. You know, my mm -hmm. go wasn't even that much. I didn't make a $100 million go. It would have been nice. But it worked out just great, and I'm happy it was fine. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the question was, how can you do this? Because he was already raising the next round. He just closed on the 60 or 100. And his answer was illuminating about the way venture realities work. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, you know, I can, hit a, I can hit a wall at 60 miles an hour or 200 miles an hour. I'm dead either way. But if I don't hit the wall, wow. And that's pretty much definitively venture. And it's, it's mm. why I do see odd behavior. I'm surprised because venture is not about downside protection. Venture is about upside return. Mm. But as a side note, I'm pretty sure it, you can check this publicly, so I don't want to say anything out of turn, but yeah. I'm pretty sure Hulk ended up bankrupt. You know, he went way up. I mean, he guy made a massive amount of money, but I'm pretty sure it all went away. And then he came back again. So mm. classic, uh, classic story. I'm, I'm not looking for that level of roller coaster ride, I'll tell you, but... But it's, it's true of us. Uh, and in terms of things I've missed, you know, every once in a while, there's a company I had an opportunity to, to get involved with. I mean, really, there's, there's one, and I won't name the company because it's not fair to them or to the entrepreneur, but I had met with, uh, my old rule of thumb was I can't get yes in one meeting. I can't get to a yes in one meeting. I can get to no in one meeting, or I can get to, I want to spend more time with you. And I was on my third meeting with this entrepreneur, and I had already decided going into the meeting I wanted to fund him. And I asked him one question. I said, oh, by the way, just uh, tell me about how that deal went through with how that's going with so-and-so. He said, oh, yeah, it didn't work out. I was like, what do you mean it didn't work out? You told me you had a signed contract with company X. He's like, well, it wasn't so much a signed contract as it was a conversation. Mm. Like, oh, okay. Well, that's, that's too bad. I'm sorry to hear that. Anyway, I just wanted me to face to face to tell you what we are going to pass. I, I think you've got an interesting opportunity on this one. <laughs> and I left because I thought I can't, I can't trust this guy. He's there's one exaggerating is one thing, bald face lines another. And I didn't want to be in a situation where I had an entrepreneur that I couldn't trust because trust is an absolute for me. I'm, you know, I don't think I've lied since I was 16 years old. It's mm. not just a decision. It's lying, selling your soul one slice at a time. Anyway, the company he backed though is a very, very, very strong unicorn right now. Mm. He got fired and replaced, but he's the only one I knew. So that's the one that got away, but I'm still not sure whether I made a mistake because mm. all I can do, my partner, Paul Schaus, says something I love. He says, the end result is not indicative of whether the decision was correct or not. Mm. You know, was it an incorrect decision to fund Friendster? The outcome would lead you to believe it was, 
But I would argue whoever did it at the time was absolutely spot on. Friendster, MySpace, Facebook, they were all, in my opinion, correct decisions at the time. There may have been elements of them that maybe someone should have thought about or should have noticed. But, mm. you know, you think about outlier entrepreneurs, you could, you could describe an entrepreneur. I, I mm. won't do this out of respect to the two entrepreneurs and the heart of it. But you could use one single description of an entrepreneur and their personality. And it could easily be applied to either the founder <laughs> of Facebook or the founder of one of those companies that has no value anymore. Because I would argue at the time there, there were certain personality traits that were quite similar and you had to be able to put up with them in order to find either of them. Yep. So um, brilliant people in both cases. Just yep. So I don't, there's nothing that makes me, uh, nothing that I sort of wish would have for the shoulda. Wow. Um, well, Ben, this has been fantastic. I always love talking with you. Um, I always learn from you and I always end up remembering and taking home those little one one sentence nuggets. Valhalla and Nirvana. Um, Nirvana. Valhalla. Well, there's a Valhalla chocolate, which is actually quite good. So, <laughs> of their brand. Thanks awesome. for having me on. No, I really appreciate it, Ben. Thank you very much, and we'll be in touch. Cheers. All right. Take care.